Hi, and welcome to the Arts Flash podcast, where we will have open and playful and also meaningful and thought-provoking conversations about art, creativity, life and spirituality that will stimulate both your mind and soul and give you a chuckle at the same time. Hi, I'm Joy Fay, And I'm Eve Marie Woodson-Jones. And welcome to our podcast. And today we're going to talk about if creativity can solve our life problems. So it's going to be a very interesting uh, discussion. And just before we start, if you would be so kind to uh, like our video and subscribe so we can share it with as many people as possible, that would be fantastic. Thank you. So let's dive into this very interesting subject. (laughs) Yes, a very broad subject as well. (laughs) Yeah, well, we've talked quite a lot about creativity. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see how we feel about it create um helping to solve our problems and i suppose then it rather depends what you call problems <laughs> this is true yeah 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 i think it's um it's a very broad topic as well because i think that sometimes what we think of as problems are just um our inability to kind of see uh alternate ways of looking at a situation so we define them as yeah. problems but they're not really um, we're just kind of stuck in a bit of a, you know, with blinders on and we're not able to focus outside of it, sort of being in the in the forest without seeing the trees. But anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think personally, for me, um, painting particularly um, has helped me keep my personal challenges in perspective. I think, you know, stepping out of that zone of thinking or, you know, when you're when you feel that you're a bit overwhelmed by different challenges and issues, that if you can take yourself out of it to do something else for a while, Mm -hmm. you can start looking at it differently. And certainly for me, um, that helps me tremendously. (laughs) so do you find the same thing yeah it's kind of the opposite of what we were talking about last week when we were talking about how to unblock yourself by doing something else outside of painting for example to shift your focus Mm -hmm. but now you're using the painting to actually shift your focus outside of what's going on in the rest of your life and letting you know your brain sort of process it while you're doing the painting you know in a exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, or anything creative in in actual fact I mean in my case it's normally painting right sometimes it's gardening <laughs> uh, because I I like doing that stuff in the garden and um you know other little projects that I might do just to immerse myself in something else mm-hmm. to um change how I'm thinking I think the changing thinking is a really interesting one and it sounds so easy you know well just change what you're thinking about um but when if if it's a really emotional situation it's quite challenging to be able to do that yes yes for sure yeah well one of the things that I thought of uh, talking about today was um because I also do different uh, crafty things. You know, I I like to knit and crochet and and other things as well. And one of the biggest lessons that I've learned through doing these things is that um, you have to learn how to fix your mistakes in order to continue to, you know, uh, achieve what you want. And fixing your mistakes, I mean, and then I'm saying mistakes, but you know, doing something that you didn't mean to do, for example, um, to undo, you know, to kind of go back and undo what you've just done is as important as actually doing the thing, you know, correctly, if you like. And it gives you a sense. So how can of- how can you go back and undo, though? How does that work? Well, when you're knitting, mind? I don't know. I mean, you've knit, you know how to knit, right? So you have to learn how oh, to yeah, unpick, yeah. unpick your stitches to kind of <laughs> take you back or 
there's actually a term called <laughs> frogging, which is, you know, taking it off the needles and just, you know, ripping it out until you get okay. to the point where you're back where you wanted to, you know, where you've undone the mistake. And then you put the okay. you know, put the work back on the needles yeah. and you keep going. Um, I wish we could do that in life. Wouldn't well, that be yes, great? Exactly. Yeah. I'd be undoing a lot of knitting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's having, you know, and it's such a frustrating thing to do. But I think, again, if you take it into consideration as being part of the process of sometimes you do have to take, you know, three steps back to continue going forward, right? Hmm. And it's a it's yeah. a it's a mindset about it's okay hmm. to do that. It's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. And in fact, everybody does it. They just you know you kind of have to kind of deal with it and go on. Um, and so I think that that's part of the process of problem solving, is to sometimes realize that you've gotten yourself into a situation. Can you back yourself out of it and start again? You know, finding a way to. Um, unravel, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, the problem to a point where, okay, now I can, I can re, can, I can start again. I can continue and go down maybe a slightly different path, yeah. and take it, take some different decisions. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I understand what you're saying. And I also think that's applicable to um, if you've got a, if you're in a challenge with a partner or a friend or somebody, you know, the ability to say, I'm sorry, I'm yes. going to have a, you know, I'm rethinking how we've arrived at this situation. You know, if you feel that, I mean, it might yeah. be that you don't feel that. <laughs> right, but, right. Um, right. If you do kind of take the time to examine how you've got to being in a <clears throat> difficult place and, yes. you know, communication has gone haywire and everything blows up in in the wrong way, then to be able to say, okay, um, I'll rethink how I approach this and perhaps yes. not do that yes. again. Yes. <clears throat> and let's stop and start um, again, you know, the conversation or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And doing something creative can can certainly help you do that. Yes. Yes. And being being, you know, just to 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 refocus your mind. And funnily enough, with knitting. I used to do a lot of knitting when I was younger. And in fact, I have still got um, a bag, which is actually a knitting bag yeah. <laughs> that I knitted when I was at school. And I've still got it. Oh, really? <laughs> it's in, in blue and red. It's wonderful. Anyway, um, not not quite so recently, but maybe the oh, in the COVID time, actually, when I was sort of quite concerned about all different kinds of things, as we probably all were, um, I I had a thing to start knitting. And I literally just, I didn't know really what I was going to do, mm. but I bought some wool and I bought some needles and I would sit in and uh, in the evening particularly and just do knit a row, pearl a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> knit right. a row. And it kind of, it kind of really calmed me down. Because yeah. it took my mind off all the, you know, the different challenges that were going on, you know, what was I going to do, how I was going to do it, how to, you know, keep myself up and running and all those um, problems that, mm. that it caused because yeah. all my work completely Came stopped. To yeah. So I had to, yeah, I, I had to rethink like, you know, a million other people had mm. to. And, and just actually sitting there, Doing that rather than sitting there just blindly watching TV and being completely turned off and whatever, to be actually doing something and seeing this scarf or whatever it was grow and grow, grow and longer. grow and grow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, slowly but surely, it kind of calms you down. Your breathing starts to even yes. out and yeah. the anxiety changes. And indeed, you know, with painting, that absolutely happens with me right you know i can i can go off in a different space and um and come back with a different point of view yeah. but i think that the um the communication thing is so interesting um to have a look at how you know when we get into an argument or a challenge with somebody 
and it goes in the wrong direction. You know, how we can creatively put it back together again. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that also means the other person has to be willing as well, doesn't it? It's not a it's not just you wanting to make a fresh start um, of it. Well, yes, but I think at the same time, if you change your feeling state, yeah, and it changes the vibration, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. It change if 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 one isn't um, resistant and possibly aggressive with with it, it can't help but have an effect on the other person, even if they still are in a tantrum. It changes the dynamic of it. Yeah, if you change your intent behind what you're trying to discuss, yeah. you know, and, and that changes yeah. the mood and the feeling and the energy, mm. say, yeah. Yeah, for sure. and I think last time I was telling you, or I, I wasn't telling you, we were talking about um, children having tantrums. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, that great program of Super Nanny. And it's interesting because in order to divert the, 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 the child from the tantrum, is to start being involved with them creatively. Yeah. So to be doing something, to be drawing or, you know, building with bricks or Lego or, you know, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. The point is that it diverts away. Yeah. So it's it stops the problem going any further because the child has got diverted and refocused mm -hmm. on something else. And I think that sets a pattern for all of us. If we can divert the the challenge the problem into something else then it changes yeah and the <laughs> other thing that I've also learned from knitting also <laughs> is that sometimes okay. you get to a point where it's unfixable you can't <clears throat> you know you you've gotten yourself into a real knot literally you know there's nothing you can do about it and so what are you going to do are you going to keep struggling with it or, you know, or, or are you going to put it aside and forget about it? And maybe one day you'll go back to it and try to, you know, continue. Um, I had this happen to me not that long ago. I had started knitting something and I got to the point where I I'd messed it up so badly and I tried to unravel it and it wouldn't unravel. It was a very fine, you know, mohair yarn and it just got tangled in and on, on onto itself. And I had to make the horrible decision of just actually throwing it away. And it was so heartbreaking. Couldn't you just, couldn't you just cut it? Not really. No, it doesn't really work that way. I mean, maybe I could have thought of some other creative thing to do with it. You know, and it's sort of, it was, it was in a mid stage. It wasn't anything really at that point, but mm. I couldn't go forward and I couldn't go backward. So now what do I do? Okay. And it was haunting me and I thought, okay, if I just get rid of it completely, it kind of takes that whole decision out of my mind. You know, I mean, it's a big decision just to throw it away, isn't it? Because I hate throwing things away. And I'm always looking for ways to fix things and repurpose things. But but sometimes <laughs> that's what you have to do. You know, you have no choice. And by doing that, it kind of released this energy or this feeling of frustration and, and, and you know, um, anger in a way towards myself you know forgetting myself in this situation to begin with because no one else did it it was just me um and mm. then allowing me to just say that was a lesson I learned a lesson from that and it's okay to just you know get rid of things sometimes and walk away not lightly but after a lot of consideration I think sometimes it's mm. what you have to do and it's the same way with relationships isn't it when sometimes you well, I was just going to say, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> sometimes there's no fixing it; you've just got to walk away. <laughs> yeah, well, we know about that a bit. <laughs> well, yes, I know you've gone through it. I've gone through it many times, and and I think most people um, have. You know, by the time they come to our age, you know, had several kind of unsuccessful attempts. <laughs> <laughs> so. Does our creativity help us solve that awful feeling when you have thrown it away? Well, it I, to me, I think it allows us to um, opens up the opportunity for a fresh start on something else. To look at it, to look at welcome something new into your life 
that's different. Mm. You know, uh, they say nature abhors a vacuum, right? So if you create this okay. open space in your life, something else will come into it. And if you open up your heart to having new things come in, something will Oh, happen. for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, I, 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 I totally go with that. Yeah. And um, I think the more we're open to that, the more amazing things happen. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, I, I for sure feel that. And I, I find it... I find it fascinating, really, how how that really works. Mm -hmm. I've had a, a a challenge in my situation of, of quite recently, and um, I was wondering, you know, what I was going to do about it. It was to do with my house, and there were a, a big conflict of differences between me and my landlord. Oh. Normally, it's the landlord that always wins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, in a normal situation. And I thought, you know, I've got. To, I really meditated and and worked on think trying to think about it differently because I was really angry with him, mm. and that's not getting me anywhere. So, I think that process of of taking a step back and looking at it and doing some other things that make me feel good because that was not making me feel good suddenly you start to think about it differently yeah and I did this over a period of time this situation has been going on for a few months anyway I came to a conclusion in my mind that it was you know why asking myself why why were they doing that in the first place and what is it that they really wanted and rather than just looking at it from my point of view so I was sort of putting myself in their shoes which in itself is quite a creative thing to do to make yourself think about it differently definitely any case so um the long and the short of this this ramble is that having come to that conclusion I decided I would just have a conversation with him and and be open about it and say, you know, I felt this and I felt that. I would like to do this to make up for some of the challenges that have gone on. Are you open to that? Mm -hmm. And I was completely astounded because he said yes. <laughs> well, if if I if I'd gone at him aggressively and saying, yeah. you know, I'm really angry about this and I'm really angry about that, blah blah blah, you know, it would have would have been curtains really right so that creative process which I had to force myself to do it wasn't just you know oh that's what I'll do I was really having to meditate on how best to put this together and the outcome was fantastic well, <laughs> so we've solved the problem we're now back to an even keel and everything is cool so and he's allowing me to expand my studio which I'm really happy about that's wonderful <laughs> that's great um so it's worth taking the time and the step back doing something else and thinking and feeling about it differently or looking at different ways to approach something there's not just one way so you made a conscious you, know? you made a conscious choice to find a different solution yeah yeah I did right I did because I, I the, the alternative wasn't really a good alternative I didn't I don't want to move again you know it's a bit big up evil so I had to find a way and I feel that if I could do that to more things <laughs> where there are challenges, if we could all do that for more things exactly. where there were challenges, rather than, you know, going in at it like a bull in a china shop and turning the thing upside down and getting angry and frustrated and upset and causing a whole great big emotional turmoil, that if one can look at it as, as what are the different possibilities and how do I feel about that? If you can get yourself to feel differently. Exactly. Yeah. I feel that you can get yourself to feel differently by doing something creatively. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it literally changes your perspective. 
I just think that's how how it works. From a neurological brain point of view, I'm not quite sure what the scientific view is of that, but I think you, I'm sure you would come up for an, with an answer. For yeah, that. well, it, it's called having a growth mindset. You know, there's this concept of having a growth versus a fixed mindset, and a growth mindset is exactly what you just described, which is. Um, opening up yourself to the fact that, first of all, there is a solution, you know, that you're not stuck mm. in that situation. There is a way out. And um, it's, you know, it's just a question of finding it and being open to all the different possibilities of what that might be. And also open to having mm. your, you know, your relationship, your communication with this person be, you know, uh, be positive and not expect it to be negative necessarily, mm. which is, I think, what happens back to what yeah. you were saying about having the intent of, you know, uh, changing the vibration, changing the energy around the interaction mm. makes a big difference, I think, as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel that also, you know, with any situation where you find yourself at um, a crossroad or a difficult position you know particularly I think in in relation you know intimate relationship where you're expecting x behavior from them and they're yeah. expecting x behavior from you and then suddenly you give them a different behavior <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you respond to it differently you know yes what yes, yes. yeah <laughs> you can kind of change it that's and, right yeah. um, I just wish I knew this stuff you know 25 30 years, years ago, ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, it just kind of wasn't wasn't around to think about it like that in those days unfortunately you know you just uh and what you don't know you don't know and you know it's interesting, isn't it? I think about that quite often. If only I'd known then what I know now, you know, different things would have happened. <laughs> I know. It's very easy, isn't it, to kind of go back in time in your head and say, oh, gosh, you know, yeah. if I said that or done that, um, you know, how much easier, you know. Yeah things would have turned out or or not yeah who's to say obviously and, and 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 you know relationships and friendships you know that you know you cherish at the time and then something happens and it 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 disintegrates yeah and it, it's so silly really because you know even with ex-husbands you know we love them to begin with <laughs> yes. to marry yeah. them yeah. You know? yeah yeah even though it's difficult to think about that now <laughs> but there was something there that we you know yeah that, that put us there that's right so that's right. um I think my whole creative path has given me a whole new view of of life that I just never had in those days yeah. and no one ever talked to me about it I think it's great that we can have these conversations and you know, gives, well, gives me chance to think about it mm -hmm. also, but also gives people listening a chance to think about, can you think about something differently? Can you think about it in a more creative way? Yeah. Does it have to be set in stone as this is what I believe and I'm going to stick to it come high or hell water? Or is there some, some flexibility you know the, yeah. the the tree bends with the wind doesn't it it moves it flows i um i was walking down the street the other day and i was walking past a shop that had a bunch of posters in the window and i happened to look in and there was one right there and i thought oh i've got to get that one and <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take a photograph of it and i'll send it to you and you can embed it into the video but basically <laughs> it's an image of a buddha sitting there you know in typical sort of meditative mm. um you know stance <laughs> and then underneath mm. it just says let that shit go <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant i love that and i thought that's exactly <laughs> it you know we hold on yeah. to all of these old um <sighs> thoughts and patterns of thinking and and resentments and anger mm. and you know past history of things 
and we're just so engulfed in it and we can't find our way out of it. And I think that it, it does need to be, you have to have the willingness, you know, to, to break free from yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To, to kind of go, okay. I mean, you know, it was funny, you know, if you were to paint, I mean, in a way, how am I saying this? It's kind of pent up anger, isn't it really? It is. It's it is. kind of, you know, uh, yeah. If you painted that, if you kind of just put a big, you know, black yeah. lines yeah. or something, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. just actually rid yourself of that, uh, then you know that it might turn into something really fascinatingly interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and to change the belief why one of my biggest questions to myself is I've gone through certain stages in my life of believing different things and at the time was absolutely passionate that that was the only way and then something happens and you kind of go uh well actually maybe there could be another way yeah yes. <laughs> and I surprised vision. myself yeah. Yeah. I can surprise myself that I was so determined that that was it. Yes. And, if, you know, a few years later, I look back and I think, God, you know, why, what, where was that from? And I suppose you can put that down to experience and growing up. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It comes from way um, back. Yeah. Yeah. That something comes in and knocks that belief so massively in in a direction that you're not expecting that you you find yourself having to rethink and in that rethinking then that's your creative soul if you like looking yeah. it's trying yeah. to make you see something differently you know doing its level best so well perhaps you know you could rethink this and it really surprises me how um you know, over the years, I've gone through all these different phases of totally believing that to be the truth. And that was it. And then suddenly something happens and go, actually, <laughs> it's, not that way. Yeah. It's, it's not that. I have yeah. to rethink. And it leaves voids till you kind of re, re um, put it together again in a different way. But it certainly expands your thinking and your your mind. I mean, you know, we could get into a whole conversation about belief, which is probably a bit dangerous ground. <laughs> well, you know, but, beliefs are, yeah, it's uh, it's the foundation, I think, to so much of how we um, how we function uh, in the world. You know, our relationships, our careers, or how we how we dysfunction in the world. I mean, why there is so many wars and problems because yeah. people are so identified and so stuck on their beliefs that if right. you don't believe what I believe, you know, I'm going to do horrible things. I mean, it's madness, isn't it, really? Because it's not allowing for individuality. Why Why should you believe what I believe and why should I believe what you believe? Who says? Yeah. Well, you know? I mean, those there are those kinds of beliefs and then there's beliefs about yourself you know, self, what I would call self-limiting yes. beliefs about who you are, what you're capable mm. of. And that's, you know, obviously the foundation to a lot of the creative exercises that that you do, that I'm doing, which is to break out mm. of those, um, those you know, yeah. boundaries that we've set or that have been set, um, you that know. That have been set by somebody else's belief. <laughs> Yeah, usually. You know, usually, it kind of yeah. keeps winding back, doesn't That's it? Right. It's the belief of our our parents at the time and our educators that that's what we should, must and ought do and believe and take forward. And then suddenly that doesn't that doesn't fit. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the challenges with 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 self-belief. Yeah. And um I still personally I still struggle with that quite quite a lot <laughs> yeah I think we all do you know. yeah definitely yeah mm. it's a very slow yeah. process actually you know from a neuroscience point of view because beliefs are so um foundational and integral to our self-identity if you like 
challenging beliefs and changing them is not something that happens easily and not quickly either. And I think sometimes mm. that sort of relates to, um, you know, problem solving as well can be a long term process. Um, you know, when you're confronted with something and you're not quite sure what to do about it, it creates a discomfort, doesn't it? You're sort of you want to fix it. You want to get past this problem. You want to get to resolve it and and move on. But sometimes mm -hmm. you can't quickly and it takes time. So. I think allowing for the process of, uh, you know, that it's um, it's it's a it's a step by step thing. It doesn't happen quickly, and you've got to accept the possibility that it may not be, um, you know, it may not happen tomorrow, or it may not be resolved in a short amount of time. But if you have that confidence that you're working on it, you know, that your subconscious mm. is working on it, and you've you've changed your your thought patterns about it, your intent. Yeah. Then yeah. you yeah. know things are going to start flowing better, um, and and you know eventually yeah. it will. And um, and doing something creative helps that on its way. For absolutely. Sure. Yes, definitely. For, for, yeah. for, for definitely, I I I feel that. I know when I feel uh, personally when I'm stuck on something. If I'm if I do something in the studio, I've stopped being so confused or uptight about it yes it relaxes me to do some other things yeah so yeah it's it's a really uh, it's a fascinating subject but I do feel that if more people did more stuff creatively they would give themselves some space mm -hmm. to reevaluate their situations with their challenges I mean even you know worrying uh, <sighs> I think I used to be a great worrier. I'm not, I don't worry as much now because I think each day presents something new and different. Well, and what can you and do? Yeah. What, where does worry get you? Where that All that energy that you put into, God, this is going to happen or that's going to happen or what if this happens? It, it they're, they're crazy thoughts, really. Yes. How do we know what's going to happen? What do we, what do we... We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Well, we spend and it's funny our, and mental energy focusing in on what happened yesterday yeah. and what might happen tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, the worry, the worry thing is 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 a crazy emotion to have to to stop worrying. Um, I had a book on how to stop worrying. A long, I, I can remember reading that. Yeah. <laughs> Because who knows what's going to happen. I've had an interesting thing happen today mm -hmm. is that because I'm getting this stuff done in the studio, I had someone come over to have a look at it to give me a price on it. And they brought their girlfriend who was lovely. They're both from Holland. And um, we were talking afterwards and, you know, she was saying, oh, I paint a little bit. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah. She said, if I got a group of people together, would you do a workshop? <laughs> oh wow I said Fantastic. yeah cool and and she she does organizes events wow you know big events yeah. not just little events big yeah, events yeah. and she does it online and everything so I said well I'm you know I'm doing a, the, the, the retreat in September I said and we're nearly full but we just need a you know a few more people and then it would be fantastic to have full it's fine as it is but we had a few more people she said oh I can help you with that <laughs> really wow. yeah really oh my so gosh. I'm kind of thinking I've asked somebody to come and help me sort out this door in the in the studio and here's this lovely girl that arrives I've never met before I mean talk about something amazing happening I can worry about it till the cows come home but if I just kind of let it go I've been painting today and preparing canvases I don't know if you can see behind me to do some stuff yeah I thought well, it'll happen you know things will happen and then suddenly I'll help you with that <laughs> wow I spent that that's Thank great you. that's so amazing <laughs> I, I just get so yeah. I, it gives me chills when I hear stories like this because it just reinforces to me you know the whole wonderful mm way that things happen you know the way that life unfolds yeah. and and you know the interconnections between 
this happened and then that led to this and then that happened to that. Yeah. Um, so we go back to, if we allow it, this creativity, the universe's creativity that created us in the first place, if we allow it just to do its thing, miraculous things happen. <laughs> I just wanted to also mention there's a couple of other things that um, that I think are relevant to this. And again, coming from the knitting uh, perspective, is that <laughs> it's it, it's important to pick the right pattern and the right materials, because if you don't, you're going to end up being frustrated by, you know, as you're doing it and the end result won't come out the way you were in, you were hoping it would. So in painting, I'm sure, you know, you've got to have the right um, types of paints and the right colors and the right brushes and the right paper and so on. Otherwise, you're not going to get what you want out of it, are you? You're not going to succeed in the in producing something that appeals to you. Um, yeah, I get that to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would say it's always kind of quite interesting to improvise. True. Even if you haven't got the right things, you can um, turn stuff around and be creative with what you do have. And how can I get that effect doing it in a different way? Yeah. But yes, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's, you can't hammer a nail in if you haven't got a hammer and a nail. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the right tools for the right job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, with that kind of thing, I would, I would agree. And actually, you know, if you've got the right tools, it can make it a damn sight easier. Well, it also um, makes you feel better because when you're using a nice brush or a nice, you know, type of paint that flows, mm -hmm. gives you a, it, there's a lot of sensuality in the exercise, isn't there? You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. And sure. it's the same with knitting. You've got mm -hmm. this really low, at least for me, I mean, part of the, the enjoyment of it is holding on to this really lovely, soft, you know, yarn and working it through your hands mm -hmm. and then feeling, you know, the material as it's growing and feeling, you know, it's weight, nice, isn't it? lightness and how it drapes <laughs> and all this kind of thing. And so to me, it's all part of um, feeding your creativity is, is getting that sensual physical feedback mm. from working with, um, you know, the materials that you're using. Yeah, 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 exactly. But you, you don't have a cat. I do. I have two cats. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I know when I knit, um, if the cat's in the house, <laughs> she thinks it's a wonderful game. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 Because it's every time, you know, you're doing this, she's kind of going like this. And yeah. Trying to get <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, twinkle, stop. <laughs> I've actually trained her. She sits there on my lap and she watches me and I can tell when she's about to go like this, you know. And I say, don't do it. <laughs> no, don't do it. Oh, dear. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's um, well, an interesting conversation. And I feel, you know, it's, it, it sows a lot of seeds to how we think about things and how we believe things and to question those things and to feel, you know, creatively, is that what you really feel? Mm -hmm. And I ask myself that the same the same question is that really how I feel or, or have I got that from somewhere else yes and if I let myself relax if I meditate would a different would a different idea come into my mind about that mm -hmm. and, and inevitably then, it does <laughs> yeah and by sharing your work on the you know in the community and getting other people's feedback sometimes you get a whole different mm. perspective as well yeah yeah. Yeah. In fact, somebody had put something up in the in the in the Facebook group today and they said they really don't like this painting. What could they do with it? And I looked at it and I thought it was lovely. <laughs> and I said, I, I, I feel this painting is really nice. Yeah. You know, what's yeah. what's your challenge? Why what's are you liking it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, then I said, suggested turn it around a different way and have a look at it the other way around. And another really good thing to do is to have a look at it in a mirror. Oh, yeah. Because if you look at it in the mirror, you get a different, you get a different perspective. You get a ref obviously the reflection back, but it's different. Yes, that's true. And then you, you see it differently. And, you know, sometimes if you, 
if you're feeling miserable or you're not feeling how you want to feel and you look in the mirror <laughs> and you, you see you've got a feeling of what's going on behind but you're not looking at yourself and then you look at yourself and you say you know maybe I'm not so bad after all <laughs> you know what I mean yeah because you can talk to yourself in the mirror that's right yes and talk yourself out of you know well what I'm what about what part of myself do I like you know well it feels as if I don't like anything you know that's the right backlash. Yeah. yeah but then you yeah. can have a look then in the mirror well you know what do I think about my eyes and what do I think about my nose and you start looking at yourself in a kind of different way yeah which yeah. is intriguing because we don't really spend a lot of time looking at ourselves you know it's other people like yeah when I true. when I look back at this and see the video you know thinking, oh, god you know do, oh, well that bit was all right but that bit, <laughs> yeah really I know wasn't. I know I know it's a little scary <laughs> sometimes to see so, yourself, you know, you know you're not kind of sitting there talking to yourself in that way no. so it's kind of the whole thing is fascinating in my in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> and also how, you know, you see yourself in your mind's eye a certain way, you see yourself yeah. in the mirror a certain way, but then others see you in a completely different way, right? right. Yeah, and, um, exactly. Yeah. And I think we should do something on self-portraits. I think that would be ah, really interesting. That's a great idea. Yeah. We should make that a, yeah. a challenge. We could, yeah. We'll yeah. Go to Betty Edwards. She's a great one on, on, on starting people off on self portraits because you start off and it goes kind of a bit wonky donkey, <laughs> and then you know as you practice it, you get better and better and better. Right. Um. But I think the I can remember I haven't done one for ages, but I used to, and it's a fascinating thing actually studying your own face. <laughs> Or even maybe doing a series, I, you know, from when you were a yes. child, if you get baby pictures of yourself, yeah. you know, and just do I'll have to I'll have to take a lot of artistic license, I think. Oh, that's all part of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear, be very creative with how I put it together. Have but you ever yeah, seen anyway? Yeah, sorry. Have you ever seen there's somebody who does um um he takes people that have already passed on, like John Lennon, for example, I, I, and he mm. gives us an image of what he would look like today, you know, at 80 something years old. Oh, wow. Based no, on, I haven't you know, seen that. yeah, and they're so good. They're so great. And, you know, they're, the essence of who they were is still very much there, but then they've aged them, but in a very nice way, you know, in a very creative way. Okay. So, yeah, it's fun. Oh. Uh, yeah. I still think I'm 18 or 20 or something. Well, I get, exactly. Get a shock. I think, oh my God, what's happened? <laughs> That's why I don't look in the mirror that often, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to be creative solving that problem. Well, I've got a lot more wisdom than I had when I was 21. <laughs> See, it's all for the good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, interesting conversation, Eve Marie. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And um, we can find you on your Facebook group. Any more news on your website yet? I'm trying. I've been reaching out to them and I'm not getting an answer. So it's been a bit frustrating oh, for me, shame. but I'm going to mm -hmm. uh, keep pushing on it. So, yes, hopefully soon. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll put all the information below. Yeah. And uh, um, then if you want to follow up on anything, that would be fantastic. And thank you so much for listening. And, you know, it's great to hear your comments. Um, it would be lovely for you to say what you feel about your creative process in solving some of your um, challenges and issues. So that would be fantastic. And like... And share if you think that someone else would be interested in listening. And it's been great to talk to you today. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank and you. next Monday, we're out every Monday. So yep. um, uh, look out for us there and we'll catch up soon. Thanks right. a lot. Okay. Bye Take for care. now. Bye. Bye. Bye.